Good morning, everyone. Can you believe we're already in September? And I do wish all of those going to school, either in the room or virtually or whatever the case may be, um, we'll get through this together and concentrate, apply yourself to your studies no matter where you find yourself, and we will have better days. Strengthen uh, each one of us, strengthen one another um, with love in the midst of this difficulty. The psalm is once again an inspiration to me, and this one is well known, Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Don't you wish you were slow to anger? Mm -hmm. I certainly do. Of great kindness. Well, I do pretty good on that score most days. The Lord is good to all. I think I'm at about 90, 95% of that one. Compassionate toward all his works. I think I'm pretty good on that one too. When he says all of his works, by the way, how are you treating the earth these days? How are you treating the good earth that God has given us? How are you making sure that the custody of the created existence that God gives us is, is really kept uh, free from pollution and from excessive use and from being taken for granted? So there's a lot here. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord. You know, that's interesting because all of God's works give God thanks. I was looking at a sunset the other day. Who could create a sunset of the, of the beauty, the color, and the magnitude that I saw? Just that sunset was giving glory to God. I couldn't even come close. But God is giving it to me. With two eyes, I feasted on it. I enjoyed it. I give glory to God in my short prayers and in my humility of the, of, the, of the small person that I am. I looked at the sunset. I said, my God, this is, my God, look at this, you know, screaming out. Look, at this is what I can do. And all we have to do is drink it in and enjoy it. But once again, are we enjoying the earth? Are we taking good care of the earth? Because that's the work of God. We are, but the planet on which we sit, that's also the work of God. It is finite this little blue marble that we inhabit. It's a water planet. There are very, very few in the whole universe, so science tells us. So we need to take very, very good care of it. There are so many other wonderful parts to this. Making known to men your might, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Do we let others know when we're happy and smiling? It's because we're happy and strong in our faith. We're so shy, we Catholics. We don't say anything like that. We really don't, and we should. You know, evangelical Protestants, they have no problem standing up and letting the whole world know how they glory in God's love. And we just kind of sit there, and we shouldn't. We should let the world know as well how much we enjoy the glory and splendor of God. The Lord is faithful, holy. He lifts up all who are falling and raises up those who are bound up. He lifts up all who are falling. I like that too because I fall a lot, not physically, but we fall in anger, in jealousy. We fall in, in, in ways in which we could do more, and we don't because we're lazy. We fall because we're indifferent and apathetic, and because sometimes we neglect those we love. Those are the ways we fall, but Christ is always waiting to lift us up, telling us you can be better, you can do more, you can be there for others in ways you never imagined. You don't have to fall. You don't have to fall down in the ways in which we disappoint other people. And all too often, that's the worst falling of all, those we love. It can ruin marriages, can separate families. Falling down on the job, some people might say that happens in your place of work when you're hiding behind the machinery you're supposed to run or out on a coffee break when you should be there. But falling down on the job of being a spouse, a parent, a loved one, a good friend, that can become unforgivable, it can ruin relationships. God is there to prevent us from falling down on the job, but once again, it takes prayer. It takes giving thanks. It, it takes walking around all day, and in a sense, having a conversation with God. I said to somebody the other day, I don't mind so much wearing the mask, especially in supermarkets and stores, because when I'm busy picking out food and walking around, I talk to myself. I have rhetorical conversations, and now nobody knows. I don't have to worry about being in the frozen food aisle and having a discussion with frozen chicken legs because they may or may not be what I'm looking for. Now I'm free to do whatever I want. But what about God? Do we have that conversation with God or is it always with ourselves, about ourselves? My friends, it's always about God. God put us here. That's where we're going at the end of life. 
why not have a little more conversation with that traveling companion who is the Lord Christ, gift of God to our hearts. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. A little prayer every now and then might pick up the pace on what we owe to God. Once again, the Gospels from Luke, Jesus went out to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath. They were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with a spirit of an unclean demon. He cried out in a loud voice, what have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, be quiet. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, what is there about his word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding community. What a great gospel and um, you notice the question in there? What is there about his word? And I spoke about this yesterday. What is there about his word is easily answered if you read further what his words are. His words are the application of social justice to everyone who needs help in the world. That's what it is about his word. Feed the poor, heal the sick, take care of the dying, take care of widows, orphan children, I mean, what more is there? Forgive 70 times, have compassion toward others, love God with your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. His word, that's the word. And, and, and the word is to come out of yourself and to, to, to live the life of Christ in the world, to walk as Christ in persona Christi in the Latin, to walk in the person of Christ. And, and, and that's really what we're called to do. What a wonderful little phrase. What is there about his word? His word is life-giving, my friends, and you can give that life. I know, I've done it, and I know hundreds of people, friends, parishioners, those I love, who have done exactly the same thing. They have given life, but it takes a certain amount of sacrifice and self-denial. Because when you give sacrifice, when you go outside of yourself, it means you humble yourself before God and you put other people before yourself. You put others before yourself. And that takes time. And that means that what you want to do and where you want to go might not happen the way you would like it to, just the way the world happens to be. And so my friends, um, that's what it is about the word. You should be about the word in the world. Some people say to me, oh, Father, that's your job. Really? I'm going to carry the weight of the whole world on my shoulders? Not going to happen. I broad and strong shoulders. Not that strong. Every person needs another person. And you might be that person who hears the word. What is about the word? I'll tell you what's about the word. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm saying it to you. Every one of us should be saying to someone else, especially those in need. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion.
My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says, or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs>